Something else that's spoken about in Study Unit 5 is the counting process. Right now, you guys are still looking at step number one. Step number one is the most important step. Why? Because you need to interpret and understand what's happening. Is it cash or is it credit? Is it an increase or is it a decrease? Okay, that's the most important step, is identifying what's happening in the transaction. Because then later, you'll look at journals, you'll look at ledger, you'll look at statements. Okay, trial balance, it's spoken about, you don't really have to draw it up. Okay, it's not something that's really tested. Okay, journals are tested, ledgers are tested, financial statements are tested. Transactions are obviously tested because they come up everywhere. Source documents, they're spoken about, but you're not going to have to fill them in. Okay, they're not going to ask you to complete an invoice or fill out the details. Okay, um, they'll talk about invoices and credit notes and debit notes and checks and, and, and counterfoils and deposit slips, but they're not going to ask you to like create them. That's more bookkeeping. Okay, you guys are doing accounting, so accounting is more the interpretation. Okay, what's actually happening? Is that right? Okay. Um, maybe before we look at the general ledger, let's apply what we know. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just change focus slightly. I'm going to open up um, the past paper that you guys have. Okay. October, November, 2016. Okay, let's create a solution for the first question. Right, you'll get solutions for all of them later on. Okay, I've got lots of them for you to practice. Okay, um, FAC 1503. This is October, November. October, November 2016. All right, we're looking at the solution, the workings. Um, you don't have copies of the solutions because I haven't sent them to you yet. Okay, we're going to complete these questions. Okay, um, all the past papers, I've got them. Um, 2016, 2017, we need to create them. Okay, we need to build those solutions. That's why I want newer past papers so we can get through other types of questions. Okay, so um, let's label the sheet. I'm going to call the sheet question. Um, okay, I'm looking at question number two. A good exam technique. So let me let me discuss some exam technique while we're looking at past papers. Right. So this is the past paper that we're going to be discussing. October, November, 2016. What am I going to do? I'm going to look at this, the proposed timetable. Okay. And I've obviously got five questions I need to answer in the two hours that I have in order to pass. Right. I'm loving question number two. Why? It's the first few chapters in your textbook. The very first thing that they tested you guys on, or questioned you guys on, in your textbook is accounting equation, because that's basic analysis and interpretation. Right, how much marks am I going to get for this? Well, I'm going to get 24% for knowing some debits and credits and for knowing how to apply my rules. Do you guys agree? Okay, so when focusing on exam technique, Start with questions that are easy. Don't start with the most difficult. That's silly. Okay, now you're going to start with the most difficult. Now you're going to be stressing yourself out. It's going to take you longer than the time allocated. Then you're going to rush to do the easy stuff. Okay, the correct exam technique, start with the easy stuff. Make sure you pass the exam. Then you can go for your distinction. Okay, so we're going to focus on trying to get 50. Okay, so I'm already going to get 24% by doing the counting equation. Okay, that's one application. This application requires you to know your debits and credits and to do interpretation like we're doing now. Okay, that's why I want to do the question. Okay, so, question two. There's it. 24 marks, 29 minutes. It's not even going to take us that long to do it. You'll see. Okay. Scroll down. We need this. Analyze the following transactions in tabular format. Okay, so let's follow the instructions. Date. Debit, credit, and then asset or assets equal owner's equity and liabilities. Owner's equity, equity, plus liabilities. Okay, that's what I've been asked to do. 
for all of them. Okay, so asset there, liability there. Uh, okay, we don't need so much space here. We need more space there. Too much. Okay, better. All right, so let's have a look at how we would approach this question. Okay, right now we're practicing. So I'm not expecting you guys to do this. Later on, you guys can do your own past papers and you can check them with your solutions. Okay, right now I'm showing you how to do it. Okay, so if you get a question like this, this is how you get there. Okay, so you'll have answer, you'll have question. This is the how to answer. Okay, this is what you're doing in the exam. Okay, right, so if this was the exam, and I'm looking at question number two. I need to interpret these transactions. Okay? And I'm looking at all of these different transactions, and, I, and I'm trying to interpret what's happening in the transaction. Okay? So when focusing on day two, let's read day two and let's highlight anything that stands out. Okay, purchase goods on credit from um, C for 3150. The terms and conditions for purchasing goods on credit from C provided that settlement that a settlement discount of 12% will be granted if PPC pays their account within 15 days. All that other stuff makes no difference to the question. Okay, because remember you need to interpret the key. Okay, what is the focus? Okay, so you guys are looking at this question. What is the focus? Purchasing goods on credit. Perfect. That's the focus. Right, so we just spoke about credit. Who do we buy goods on credit from? Creditors. Right, so day two. Creditors is what type of account? A liability. What's happening to the liability if you're buying from them on credit? It's increasing. See, there's my thought process. Now look at my rule. Look at your rules. Where do liabilities increase? on the credit side. That's how you get this. Creditors bracket liability increase. Okay, that's what you would put there. Notice the bracket isn't what your niece is going to want in your answer. Okay, they're not going to see one, not going to want to see the brackets. Okay, I'm putting the bracket in so you know how I got there. Okay, I know it's a liability, I know it's increasing, then I know it's a, a credit. Does that make sense? Okay, what did I buy? I bought Goods. Okay, obviously later on we'll learn about periodic and perpetual. Okay, some of you might know that if you've looked at later modules. I'm not expecting you to know that now, so don't worry about it. I will tell you what goods are for periodic. Goods for periodic are called purchases. And purchases is an expense that's increasing. Okay, you guys will know that later once we've covered the theory. Okay, then you can go back and see, oh, okay, now I know why we did that. Right. Remember, accounting is very um, like separate in terms of here's a chapter, here's a chapter, here's a chapter, here's a chapter, and then at the end, it all gets put into one question. Okay, financial statements. Right, so you need to cover all the different chapters, and then you'll have an idea of what all of these things are. Okay, right now, we're just, a pr we're just practicing application. That's all I want to focus on here. Don't worry about all the other stuff. We'll look at it later. Okay, expenses increase. Okay, last week, or week before rather, we spoke about equity. Okay, remember we spoke about capital. See, this is revision from last time. How does capital affect owner's equity? How does capital affect owner's equity? If capital increases, what's going to happen to owner's equity? Will the owner be entitled to more or less? The owner will be entitled to more. There's the answer. Okay, income. If income increases, is the owner going to be entitled to more or less? More. See, that was something that we covered previously. Okay, then we've got the other two. If drawings increases, what's going to happen to owner's equity? Correct. The owner's not going to be entitled to more if they're drawing. Okay, so the more drawings you have, the less owner's equity you've got. Straightforward. Okay, that's, we spoke about that last time. Just revision. Expenses. If expenses go up, what's going to happen to owner's equity? It's going to decrease. Perfect. Okay, so now I know what the different accounts are. So these two are going to affect owner's equity negatively. 
these two are going to affect owner's equity positively. Okay, there are two different accounts, but there's only six. Now you've got assets, now you've got liabilities, you've got capital income, drawings, expenses. Those are the only six that you're going to get. Happy. Okay. So if I'm looking at an expense, if an expense is going to increase, what is going to happen to owner's equity? Decrease. So I show minus and the amount. What is the amount here? 3150. Creditors is a liability. Where do liabilities go up? On the credit. We spoke about that. A liability will go up, so we'll have to show plus 3150. And there's your accounting equation. Right. And see, that's how your textbook is doing it in those, some of these examples. Okay, and that's why I'm encouraging you guys to do homework by looking at those practice activities. All the practice activities in your textbook have answers. Okay, so if you don't understand how you got there after having done it. So what I don't want you guys to do is look at the answer and look at the question and say, okay, I can do it. That's bad. Okay, you need to actually do the questions, okay, because that's practice. We spoke about this as being a skill. It's like driving a car, right? You know where the gears are, you know where the steering wheel is, you know where the pedals are. It's not going to make you a better driver by studying the car. Do you agree? You need to drive the vehicle. Okay, and that's why I'm asking you guys, if you are going to practice, you need to actually do the questions. So if you see a question on the counting equation after today, you can attempt it. Okay, obviously accounting equation was spoken about in the first few chapters. All right, so this is how you would do it. Okay, let's look at the next one. Number four, an invoice to the amount of 1460 was issued to K for goods sold to him on credit. This should have stood out. On credit means debtors. The invoice was an amount of that. Okay, so is this a sale? Yes, because if you're issuing an invoice to a debtor, you've sold them something. Do you agree? Okay, so now let's think about our rules. Debtors is what? An asset. What's happening to the asset? It's increasing because I have a debtor. I didn't have one before. Okay, there's your one amount. Where do assets increase? On the debit side, just look at your rules. Okay, so what do I do? I write down debtors, asset, increase. That's just thought process. Okay, for number four. Okay, what am I crediting? Well, we just spoke about debtors. Don't debtors buy from the business and don't we sell to them? Okay, so if I sell to them, I'll have sales, income, increase. Okay, there's your debit and credits. Okay, now I need to get the easy marks. Assets increase where? On the debit side. So plus asset 1460. Sales is an income. If sales goes up, what happens to owner's equity? It increases. So the same thing over there. There's your asset, there's your equity. Happy. Okay. You see, you can't get the accounting equation if you can't do analysis. Okay, you can't do journals if you don't know analysis. You can't do financial statements if you don't know analysis. Okay, that's why I make sure that this is like something that you can do. Okay, it's so important. After this week, I want you guys to be comfortable with applying the rules. Last time I asked you to study the rules. Know what an asset is. Know what a liability is. Okay, this week, I want you to get better at applying the rules. Okay, so when I have transactions, I want you guys to be able to tell me what accounts are being affected. That's the key. Okay, right now, I'm showing you what to do. Okay. Eight. A credit note to the amount of 460 was issued to K for goods returned by him. Right, so was K happy with the purchase? No. The customer, K Mogotsi, came and returned goods. Good or bad for the business? Bad. Are you going to have more debtors or less debtors? Less. It's straightforward, right? If someone comes and gives you back the goods that they bought, are they still your debtor? No. Okay, so this is going to be debtors, 
asset decrease. Yeah, you're not going to have a debtor if they've returned the goods that they bought. Right, the debt has come down. Are you going to have a sale when they return the goods to you? No, you won't. So you'll have a sales return. Expense increase. Okay. Right, this was day eight. Sales return is an expense. If the expense goes up, what happens to owner's equity? It decreases. So 460 is going to come off your equity. Debtors is an asset. It's decreasing. Assets decrease, so minus 460, and that's it. That's number eight. Are you, okay, are you guys okay with that? Good. Okay, everyone got that? Can we look at the next one? All right, next. 11. A debtor, G, who owed 1080 to PPC was declared insolvent by N. His account must be written off. Okay, so a debtor, let's keep it simple. A debtor can't pay. A debtor is going to refuse to pay, can't pay, they're not going to pay. So what are you going to do to the debtor's account? Increase or decrease? You're going to decrease. Debtors is an asset that's decreasing because you're writing it off. If you're writing it off, they're not going to pay. Does that make sense? Right, so debtors don't pay. There's it. Debtors asset decrease. Okay, this we'll look at it later on. Credit losses. That's what you call it or bad debt. Credit losses slash bad debt. Okay, so don't worry about it now. Later on it will make more sense. Notice, see, these are other accounts that you guys can put in that table that we had. Remember the table I asked you to complete? Okay, you could now put credit losses or bad debt under which column? Expenses. Because now we've just spoken about another one. Okay, later on we'll learn about it in detail. Right now, I'm telling you what it is. Okay, it can't change. Credit losses are credit losses are credit losses. Credit losses are expenses. Okay, so assets decrease here. How much did we write off? 1080. If expenses go up, owner's equity comes down, minus 1080. And there's it. Next. Okay, let me wait for you. Are you guys okay? Got that? Happy. Okay, next, number 12. Again, apply the interpretation. Interpretation is everything. Number 12 says, the owner transferred his personal delivery vehicle with a value of 45 to the entity. What stands out for you guys here? Good. Owner giving the business a vehicle. Right, so capital, I'm happy with that. Okay, that's an easy one. That's bonus, right? Why? Because capital is C for capital, C for credit. So without thinking, you can put that there. You don't even have to put capital credit. If you want to, you can. C for capital, C for credit, it's going to go there. Okay, capital affects owner's equity how? Positively. So plus 45,000. Okay, the big question is, what did the owner give? A vehicle, which is an asset, yes. Okay, so if the asset is coming into the business, does the business have an asset or not? Will it increase or decrease? Increase. So vehicle, bracket, asset increase. There we go. Where do assets increase? On the debit side. Now I know why I've got that. Okay, the bracket is your working. That's what you're thinking about. Okay, I put it in because it helps. Assets increase, so plus 45 there, and that's another transaction complete. Makes sense. Everyone with me? Can we move on? Okay, next one. 15. Let's have a look. 
received 1,000 from K, a debtor in full settlement of his accounts. If you're receiving 1,000, is that good or bad? That's good. What's going to happen to your bank account? It's going to go up. Bank is what type of account? An asset. Where do assets increase? On the debit side. You've got half of it. Bank, asset, increase. Who are you getting this money from? A debtor. Are you going to have more debtors or less debtors? Less debtors. Where or what is debtors? Debtors is a asset. What's happening to the asset? It's decreasing. Where do assets decrease? Look at the rules. Credit side. There's, that's how you get the answer. Okay, so debtors asset decrease, that's why it's a credit. Okay, so notice in this example, you had an asset going up and an asset going down. So I'm going to show plus here, 1,000, and I'm going to show minus here, 1,000. And that's it. Or you can just show plus, minus, up to you. Okay, I prefer showing it like that. doesn't matter, as long as you show plus and minus. Make sense? Are we okay? All right. 16, another transaction. Let's go back and read it. Paid the amount owed to C. Refer to for a second March. Okay, so now I've got to go all the way back here, and I need to read that again. Right, so now the second part is relevant, because the second part is actually a payment. Do you agree? If I'm paying, am I going to get a discount? Yes, yeah, so do I pay the full amount? No, I don't pay the full amount, because I get a discount. I only pay the net amount. Make sense? Okay, so let's discuss that. Um, this, see this, okay. So looking at this, you guys can do one, two, three, four, five, six of the seven that we've looked at so far. You come to number seven, now you panic a little bit because this is a difficult one. Okay, it's still possible to pass the question. All right, so as long as you're passing every question, that's the key. Don't worry if you don't finish the paper. With accounting, sometimes you don't, because sometimes it's, it's, it's time pressure, it's time constraint. Okay, but even if you don't finish, you should at least still pass each question. So now, even if my time is up, which it isn't, we've still got lots of time, we've only spent 15 minutes now on this question, okay? I can end the question and I can still pass. Okay, so as long as you're doing everything in the exam, question by question and sticking to the time allocation, Time allocation is actually more important, to be honest, okay, with you. Right, this is what I'm looking at. After 29 minutes, you move on, okay, because you rather pass each question than leave something out. If you leave stuff out, you're leaving easy marks, okay? If I don't complete this question, I lost all those easy marks, and that's bad. Okay, so that's exam technique. Right, we'll look at that more later on. Okay, so the question said we paid the amount owed to clock, and this was on the second. Is this within 15 days? Yes. 15 days from the second takes you to the 17th. So is the discount applicable? Yes, it is. How much did you buy? Well, this is a working. Okay. Outstanding amount. So creditors. Creditors equals. I bought a 315 bracket second of. What month was this? March. Do you guys agree? Okay, we pay within 15 days, we're going to get a discount. Do you guys agree? Okay, so how much am I actually going to pay? Well, the discount is 12%. So what is 12% of 3150? Let's work it out. 3150 times 12% is 378. Okay, so that means I end up paying three seven uh three one five zero minus three seven eight close brackets equals. I end up paying that amount. Okay, so this I this is what I pay. That's my payment. That's my discount. 
and that's the outstanding liability. Okay, we'll learn about this later when we get to the notes. Okay, you, you have a note summarizing all of that. Okay, so don't stress too much about it now. Okay, for some of you, maybe if you've gone ahead, it makes sense. Maybe if it doesn't, don't worry. Okay, we'll cover it later. Right now, I'm only interested in do you know how to apply the rules? That's all. Okay, so I'll do that for you. We, you can do that for yourselves later. Okay? If I'm paying a creditor, now see, this is where you come into it. What happens to the account? First of all, tell me what it is. Creditors is a liability. If I'm paying, what's happening to it? It decreases 100%. Okay, so if I'm paying a creditor, it's going to decrease. Where do liabilities decrease? On the debit side. There's the answer. So that's what I put there. Creditors bracket liability decrease. Right, if I'm paying, what's going to happen to my bank? It's going to decrease. So bank asset decrease. And if I'm getting a discount, is this discount received or discount allowed? Think about it. Did you receive a discount or did you allow a discount? You received a discount, isn't it? I'm paying. So when you pay and you get a discount, it's a discount that you've received. Okay, so this you might not have known, but it's not a problem. Okay, later on you'll know what it is. Discount received. Brackets, income, increase. Uh, wrong side, sorry, 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 before you write that. Okay, income accounts increase where? On the credit side. Okay, so now we can record. Bank is an asset, it's going to decrease, so minus 2772. Credit is a liability, so minus 3150. And bank, a discount rather, is an income. If the income goes up, owner's equity will go up plus 378. See, and that's the distinction part of that question. Okay, that was the difficult transaction. You can't really answer it yourselves yet until we've covered the note for it, with it in the textbook, okay, in the study guide, okay, and in the notes. Right, so that's just something else to consider. What you should be able to do is that. You should be able to tell me that if I'm paying a creditor, liability comes down. You should be able to tell me that if I'm paying, bank is going to come down. Okay, those are the two things that you should be able to tell me after what we've covered now. Okay. All right, the last one. Number 25. Goods sold for 7,530 cash was incorrectly recorded in the debtor's control column of the cash receipts journal. Okay, we need to correct the error. Okay, we haven't discussed journals yet. That's the last bit we need to do today. Okay, let's just discuss what a journal is. Okay, what the purpose of a journal is. So I'm going to do this one. I'll explain what I'm doing. So later on when we do cover more errors, okay, you guys will be able to approach this. Okay, so goods sold for 7,530 cash. Okay, this was goods sold. So goods sold for cash. I should have recorded. Okay, this you would be able to do. Debit the bank. Asset increase, credit the sales, income increase. Okay, that you can do. Right, this is what I should have recorded when I sold goods for cash, because that's what they said. They say it was incorrectly recorded in the debtor's control column of the cash receipts journal. Right, so what does that mean? Well, in the cash receipts, which we'll talk about just now, you would debit the bank asset increase. Okay, asterisk, this is the cash receipts journal, CRJ. Okay, bank always goes up, cash receipts. If you get something, it's going to increase your bank. 
Okay, so they said it was incorrectly recorded in that journal. And then you would have um, credited the debtors. Asset decrease. Okay, so this is what happened, which was the mistake. This is the mistake. Okay, so they incorrectly posted this to the debtors column. And this was in the cash receipts journal. Okay, so bank would have gone up, debtors would have been affected. Okay, this is, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, what should I have done? I should have debited the bank and I should have credited the sales. Okay, so did I debit bank? Yes, I did debit bank. Okay, so I've debited bank, so that's fine. But have I credited sales? No, I haven't. Okay, so I'm going to have to credit sales, so that'll go here. Okay. And this is the mistake, so this needs to be reversed out. Okay, so that needs to be reversed out. How do I get rid of the credit? Processor, debit. So you would debit the debtor's asset increase. Okay, that would have been the correction that you would have had to have recorded for that transaction. Okay, because now you've corrected it. Okay, but like I said, I'm not expecting you to do that yet, okay, because you haven't done enough of the analysis. Okay, all I'm reading here is goods sold. Okay, so long as you're happy with that bit. I sold goods for cash, debit bank, credit sales. That you should have followed, like perfectly. Okay, the rest you, can, you guys can come back to later on. Right, so debtors asset increase plus 7530 Sales income increase plus 7530. Save. And that's it. 24 marks later, and that didn't take us 29 minutes. It took us 25 minutes. Okay. Right, and that's even explaining it. Right, so there is enough time in the exam. You just need to work carefully. You need to work accurately. Okay, don't feel like you don't have enough time. There is enough time. Just be careful with your interpretation. Interpretation is everything. Okay, we'll save that. So once we've completed all the questions for October, November 2016, then I'll send you the complete answer for it. Okay, right now we're just looking at different application. Okay. Let's go back to our notes. A little bit of theory just to end off. Okay. Right, so when looking at the rest of the theory, I'm just discussing what journals are here. Okay. We spoke about all these rules for different accounts. Assets, liabilities, income, expenses, capital, and drawings. Okay, you have a set of rules that have T accounts. Okay, what is a T account? It's this. General ledger. Okay, so when I refer to a T account, I'm talking about the general ledger. That's what you're looking at. A general ledger is just a lot, a lot, a lot of T accounts. Why do you think general ledger accounts are important? Any idea? So why do you think all these T accounts are important? That's the question. Separate recording of each transaction? Good. Into what? Into different accounts. Okay, so do you agree? When we looked at these examples previously, did I have more than one transaction that affected bank? Yes. Did this transaction affect bank? Yes. Did this transaction affect bank? Yes. Did this transaction affect bank? Yes. Okay, so notice, different transactions will affect different accounts but they're all going to affect the accounts either positively or negatively. Right, so is it possible to group similar transactions? Yes, and that's the purpose of a journal. A ledger, which is what we're looking at here, is analyzing a specific account. That's the key. Okay, so we're looking at analysis. Right, so do you agree, if I look at bank, I can analyze what's happening in the bank account. I can see if the bank is going up, or I can see if the bank is going down. And I can see why the bank is going up, or why the bank is going down. 
If I look at something like this, debit, bank, credit, capital. Okay, what transaction was or is that describing? If you had to tell me what the transaction would have said, what would the, transa what would the transaction have said? not increase and decrease. See, you're confusing increase and decrease. Both accounts are increasing. There's the answer. The owner has given. Exactly. Okay, so if you had to give me a transaction for that, you would say, the owner gave X to the business. It could be what we saw earlier, 1 million. Okay, that's one of your examples. Right, so the owner contributes one million capital to the business, or the owner gives the business one million, full stop. Right, if the owner gives the business one million, are you going to affect the bank positively? Yes. Okay, so am I going to debit or credit the bank? I'm going to debit the bank. Okay, we don't write debit there. What we would do is we'd write capital here. Okay, capital, and we would write one million. See, and that's general ledger. General Ledger is looking at analyzing the accounts that are being affecting or affected by in terms of the contra account. So you'll see if you've gone through the uh, theory, they talk about a contra account. That came from chapter, I think, two or three. Okay, the introduction stuff. Okay, a contra account just means the other account. Okay, so if I'm talking about bank, what is the contra account for bank? Capital. If I'm talking about capital, what is the contra account for capital? Bank. Okay, contra means they go together. It's a contra account. Okay, so every debit must have a credit. Okay, so in bank, I'm going to write what? Capital. Right, and then I want you to draw this. So I'm going to draw a little account here called capital. Okay, what am I going to write in capital? Bank. Bank. One million. See, those are control accounts. Okay, so that's the purpose of a general ledger. The purpose of a general ledger is to analyze what's happening in a specific account. The capital, the bank, the telephone, the sales, the whatever. Okay, you're looking at a specific account. And you're looking at what transactions affected that account. That's what you're looking at. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome.